Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently got done talking to the Maplewood Middle School in Menasha. They gave me this cool Menasha fishing team sweatshirt. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to a bunch of young kids. You know, these were kids from sixth through eighth grade. Uh, definitely always fun to talk to them. And honestly, it just made me jealous of them because when I was a kid, I would have died to have had a fishing club a fishing team, you know, when I was in 6th, 7th, 8th grade, up through high school. I missed it by about two years in high school, and I missed it by about two years in college. So I kind of missed out on that whole younger generation of kind of that fishing tournament scene, but not necessarily just fishing tournaments. What I really was envious of with these kids is they had a group of other kids that they could enjoy the outdoors with and spend some time fishing when I grew up uh, in the Chicago area, there were not many other kids that I knew of that liked to fish. So it was kind of uh, an oddity, or I was kind of a standout, which, you know, was one of those things. But regardless, I had a great time talking to them, and a lot of the questions that they had were geared towards bank fishing. And I get a lot of questions from viewers who always want me to talk about bank fishing as well. A lot of people are not as lucky as I am to have a really nice boat. You know, at this point, we're starting to see bank fishing become extremely popular just because it's much more cost efficient, right? You don't need a boat, you don't need a kayak, you can just go to the bank and do some fishing. And there's a lot of really good ways to have success from the bank. So I wanna talk a little bit about that today, some tips to locate uh, fish from the bank, as well as some of my favorite bank fishing baits. Uh, I think there are definitely, I think bait selection is one of the most important things for bank fishermen because you don't have the ability always to go retrieve your bait. So if you're constantly getting stuck, you could break off a pile of different baits and therefore it can ruin the experience. So bait selection is a huge thing. Before I start sharing some of these bank fishing secrets, I do want to remind you guys though that if you're uh, looking for some content from me or a little bit of help from me, check out the lake breakdowns that I've done with fishthemoment.com. We provide 40 waypoints throughout the lake based on a specific season. These are waypoints that uh, I have handpicked. A lot of them, if they're lakes that I have fished, they are spots that I have fished in tournaments. They are my juice spots. So if you're looking for some help, it's a really good way to do it. The link will be in the video description for the Fish the Moment Lake Breakdowns. Also, if you're looking to purchase some tackle, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel. All the money from that comes right back into making content for you guys. All right, so let's talk about bank fishing. Two of the biggest things I, I think often go mis over or um, uh, overlooked when fishing the bank has to do with, one, the location. Now, I recognize that as a bank fisherman, you're often confined to certain places. But having said that, you can still choose wisely within those places. And the, the, biggest, the biggest thing I can stress is you want to be in a transitional route if you're fishing from the bank. Don't just go set up shop in the middle of some bay that has no reason for fish to be moving in and out. Yes, you may go fish that bay and catch some resident fish. But if you truly want to have a good day of fishing from the bank, you're going to be better off in an area where those fish are actually moving around. You know, if you've got, if you're in, say, a, a bridge, for instance, bridges are great because a lot of times the fish are transitioning, regardless of the time of the year, either from the main lake to the back of the, the creeks or into a back arm to spawn, or they're working their way from the back of the pocket or the back of the creek back to the main lake. So you have a lot of transition going on through that bridge, and the bridge acts as a pinch point. So the fish have to funnel through that. That's one reason why we see bridges all the time is uh, as having a lot of bank anglers, and it's simply because they're very, very good places to fish. There's a lot of boat anglers that fish bridges as well. So, you know, you want to try to find transitional routes, and it doesn't just have to be a bridge. You could be talking about a channel swing bank. It could be a deep water, uh, if you're on more of a natural lake, you could have a deep break line that comes up to the shoreline. It could be a deep break line that runs along a shallow flat, a deep break line that hits a point. Uh, channel swing banks, rock transition banks, anything that is a good highway for fish that are transitioning from one location to the next is going to be a better place to set up shop as a bank angler. The other thing that I would really stress with bank fishing is to keep moving. 
you know, if you don't have a high percentage transition area where you can sit and let the fish come to you, you're better off moving. And, you know, when I think back to my days when I was fishing from the bank, like during college, we used to hit five, six spots all the time in an afternoon of fishing. And it was simply because we weren't fishing spots where we could let the fish come to us. So we'd go to a spot, we'd fish from the bank, fish it for 15, 20 minutes, feel like we've uh, fully fish that area, we pack up and go to the next place. And the idea was we were trying to come in contact with as many aggressive fish that were in areas that were not going to have fish transitioning back and forth to them. So you're always better off trying to cover water. And that doesn't have to be just from a car. I mean, when I was younger, I'd jump on the bike and I would ride my bike through a bunch of different parks in the Chicago area. And I'd fish a little here, fish a little there, and I would keep moving and I would have more success the more I moved versus the less I moved, unless I was in one of those transitional routes. So those are two very simple things when it comes to bank fishing, but I think oftentimes go very overlooked. I would also add that bait choice is a huge factor when you're talking about bank fishing. Now, unfortunately, as a bank angler, if you're dragging baits on the bottom, you're probably gonna get stuck more. And it doesn't have to be a dragging bait, it could be a crank bait, anything that's gonna be hitting the bottom and the problem is you're bringing your bait uphill, which is a great way to generate strikes. But if you're casting too deep, bringing it into shallow, you're going to be grinding the bottom the whole time and generally get stuck a lot more. And you don't have the ability to go get your bait unsnagged. So in my opinion, I think you're generally better off fishing baits that are higher up in the water column. Anything from like the middle of the water column up. And you got to keep in mind, a lot of times if you're fishing from the bank, you may only be fishing four feet of water anyways. So if your bait's two feet down, you're dang close to the bottom, at which point any fish that's relating to the bottom is still going to see your bait. But I like to go with baits that stay off the bottom just because it generates more strikes. Now, if I'm fishing something that uh, if, if I do want to drag the bottom or I'm fishing cover, maybe I got some laydowns or some grass. One of my absolute go-to baits is always going to be a Texas rig. This is just a Berkeley Pit Boss, one of my favorites for a Texas rig, but you almost have to have a Texas rig if you're thinking about fishing from the bank, just because you're going to encounter a lot of different types of cover. Laydowns, rocks, weeds, you can drag it on a clean bottom. A Texas rig is one of those baits that I absolutely love to have. Now, moving away from that... I like to go with higher up in the water column baits, like I said. And top waters are some of my favorites. You know, in this case, this is a Berkeley Jaywalker. I think a walking top water bait is an excellent choice because you can throw them a long, long distance. And at the same time, you're going to keep them off the bottom because they're on the top. So they're snag free. And they tend to generate a lot of strikes. When you're talking about fishing from the bank again, a lot of times you're not fishing really deep water. You're going to be fishing shallower water and therefore top water baits can be excellent choices, especially in your warmer time periods. Now, staying along that same, uh, that same frame of mind is a frog. I love to throw a frog from the bank and there's a couple of reasons for this. One, again, it's snag resistant. So a lot of the lakes that I fish up here from the bank are riddled with lay down trees. And a frog comes through wood better than almost anything. And from that standpoint, it gives me a really good weedless presentation to fish that stuff. But the second reason I love a frog, and this is something that I do with my guide trips, I love to give a frog to beginning anglers. And it's because you can throw it anywhere. The reality is if I'm fishing from the bank, I'm probably going to end up in the trees that are above me a couple of times when I go to make a, a cast. When I pull back, the bait ends up in the trees. It's just one of those baits that is so snag resistant that it's a it's a pleasure to fish versus a pain in the butt to fish. So anytime I'm fishing from the bank, a frog is something that I want to be throwing. Also, a lot of times the cover that you have from the bank are going to be lily pads or marsh grasses or weeds that are up to the surface. And therefore, your frogs can be an excellent choice for that. So again, topwaters to me are a great bait to be throwing from the bank. Next up, we're going to go with an old standby, just a wacky rig. You know, a wacky rig, again, is a bait that's so light. I like to fish it weightless. And in an instance, when I'm fishing from the shore, a lot of times I have more time, per se, to allow a bait to fall really slow because I've only got limited area to fish. So I'm much more willing to have patience. 
and therefore a, a weightless wacky rig is an absolute great bait to cover water in the area that you're that you're uh, stuck in basically. So from that standpoint, it's hard to pass this up, generates a ton of strikes, and because it's so light, it doesn't tend to get hung up that much on the bottom either, which to me is a very good thing. Last up, I'm gonna go with a small swim bait. And again, this is all about staying up in the water column. Uh, in this case, it's an eighth ounce head. I've got a 3.3 swim bait on it. And this is all about just having a bait that appeals to a lot of different types of fish. You can keep it up in the water column. If you want to fish it a little deeper, you can, but with an eighth ounce head, it rises real fast off the bottom to keep you from getting those snags. But if you happen to be fishing around a lake that has multiple different species of game fish, a small swim bait will catch a bunch. And a lot of times when you're fishing from shore, you got to settle for what is available to you. Maybe it's bass one day, maybe it's walleye the next, maybe it's white, white bass the next. It's just one of those things that you got to recognize you're not always going to have the best potential from shore for the species you truly want to uh, want to chase, but you may have really good potential for a different species at the same time. So hopefully this bank fishing tip was helpful for you. Thank you to the Maplewood Middle School for inviting me to talk. Thank you for this killer sweatshirt. You all know how much I love my Wisconsin t-shirts, otherwise known as sweatshirts. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.